Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel. So I've made it back to uh, Cyprus again and uh, certainly looks to be like the end of winter is here and the sun is shining, the shorts are back on, so all is good so far. So the first thing I want to take a look at now that I'm back is the vignetting on the Rasa 11 inside the observatory. Now, I've tried a couple of uh, different uh, mounting arrangements for the camera and neither of which appears to have improved the situation. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So here you can see on the Celestron website the front end of the OTA and the back focal distance from this metal plate uh, on the front is 72.8 millimeters and if you're using the supplied uh, M48 or an M42 rings then the back focus from the front of these rings is uh, 55 millimeters. So even with the M48 ring I still get noticeable uh, vignetting on the images. So if we pop across to my remote desktop in the observatory, here is a couple of flats that I took this afternoon on the two different arrangements. And uh, you can see both of them are pretty much identical with heavy vignetting around the perimeter. So if I nip across to PowerPoint, Here's the two configurations that I have tried so far. So using the M48 plate supplied with the RASA, I had a 21mm uh, filter drawer and the 16.5mm extension piece onto my uh, 2600MC camera, which has a 17.5mm sensor depth. Now this gives us, uh, with the two extensions, uh, sorry, the extension and the filter wheel, 55mm required, sorry, filter drawer and it's 72 millimeters back from the sensor to the front end of the OTA. Now, I went with this initial arrangement uh, because the 2600 came supplied with a 21 millimeter extension, the same width as my filter drawer, and also a 16.5 millimeter extension piece. However, the uh, size of the openings were M42 and M48, and this was the only way I could get them to mount uh, onto the camera with what I had available. So I had the uh, M42 going to M48 extension piece with an M48 to 42 adapter ring onto the front end M42 of the filter drawer and then the M48 side of the filter drawer goes onto the RASA plate. So I then ordered myself uh, a 16.5 M48 uh, extension and swapped them around. So now I've got the filter drawer with the M42 opening directly onto the camera and the 16.5 uh, M48 extension uh, onto the front end of the filter drawer and onto the RASA plate. And this still gives us the 55 millimeters and the required 72.8 total uh, back focus distance. I then also used uh, Hocus Focus, uh, the aberration inspector, and just slipped a couple of shims in uh, between the camera and the focuser, uh, sorry, the filter, just to the point where the uh, aberration inspector was saying move the sensor further or closer uh, away from the OTA and uh, settled on whatever, I think there's probably about 0.75 or one millimeter uh, of shims in there. And as you can see from the two flats I took this afternoon on the two different configurations, there isn't much of a difference. So I did some reading around on the internet as you do, and I stumbled across a thread on uh, cloudy nights uh, that said, yep, the M even with the M48 plate on the RASA, vignetting is still an issue. And one way to improve this is to use the Bada UFC system a universal filter changer which has a 70 millimeter uh, connection. So I hopped over to Bader's website and here's the all the filter uh, universal filter changer uh, configurations and for a RASA I obviously came up with the 72.8 millimeters using the various parts from the base to the sliders uh, to the extension pieces and then I also got a uh, uh, very lock which gives me 15 to 20 millimeters of adjustment that way i shouldn't need to use shims i should be able to just fine tune uh, on the actual uh, back focus distance directly so i ordered this all up while i was away 
and uh, arrived uh, today and uh, it's time to sort of put it all together and see what we can come up with. So if we go back to the PowerPoint, this is what it's going to look like with the UFC setup. So there's a new RASA plate uh, for going on to the front of the OTA that gives us a 70 millimeter opening all the way down uh, through the optical train right up until it connects onto the camera with a standard T2 uh, M42 uh, connection plate. So the 17.5mm uh, uh, sensor depth in the camera plus the 2mm optical depth of the connection plate, 13mm for the filter drawer, the green area is the Verilock 15 to 20 millimeters, and then I've got a 5 and a 15 millimeter extension pieces and then finally the RASA plate connector is 3 millimeters to give us a total distance uh, in the optical uh, range uh, for the 72.8. Now what I mean by that is if I pop across to Excel now, wherever I put it, here we can see all the various uh, optical depths for the, the different parts and with the Verilock, the one in red there, uh, it gives me 15 to 20 millimeter of adjustment which takes us in the range from 70.5 to 75.5 millimeters. So I've got uh, a good minus 2.3 to plus 2.7 around the 72.8 millimeters. This allows me to then also compensate for the filter depth, whatever filter I'm using. Uh, and adjust accordingly. So typically I'll maybe need to add another one millimeter uh, into the optical train just to get uh, close to back focus distance. So the next thing to do is to build this up and uh, give it a try. All right, so here we are. Here's all the various pieces and it's a case of uh, getting on with it, I suppose. So let me move these out of the way and they should be in order as per the planned build. So to start off, so here's the new filter plate for going on to the RASA and or sorry the mounting plate and it has a little chevron uh, ring for attaching the various components. So the first thing we have is the 15mm extension piece and in here we have got a whole bunch of grub screws and the actual extension ring. Again, it's got a similar uh, chevron part at the front end and this will clip onto here and then the grub screws will go into the body and lock it into place. Next up, we're gonna have the five millimeter ring. And the reason I'm doing it this way is I want to be able to clear the uh, edge of the OTA so that I can still get access to the uh, Verilock and be able to adjust it without having to try and come in behind uh, the, the lip uh, of the, the telescope which will obviously overlap by probably about 10 millimeters if I remember right. So again, a bunch of uh, six grub screws to go into that section. Next up on the chain, we have the Verilock. And again, it's got grub screws. You have to go and find that uh, Allen key. Okay, so the Verilock, yep, yeah, we've got the inner and outer uh, ring that, uh, that can rotate. And then we've got this outer wheel, which we can use to tighten down and lock uh, the position. So when it's released it allows you to then adjust the depth in the optical train and then once you're satisfied you just lock it down and that locks it into place. So again it's all the chevron mounts and this will go on to there. And more grub screws. So next up we have the filter body. And again, grub screws, and at last we found some Allen keys. So this will go onto there like so. And then finally, we have the camera connector plate. It's got two different types of screws. 
first being uh, standard uh, countersunk hex keys to go and mount the filter body on like so and then a whole bunch of grub screws uh, to go and lock the filter body onto the rest of it. Okay, so first things first, let me mount the cap onto the filter body. So eight screws in total to hold down the cap. Okay, so there we have it. So that's what the stack looks like. Baby lock, filter body, and extension pieces. So that's what everything. So now I just need to start putting in all the grub screws, which seems to be like it's going to be a pain. Okay. First part done. So that is the very lock. So here we can see we're going to lock it. Lock it tight. Next up is the 5mm extension ring. Next set of Allen screw, grub screws. And lastly, the plate. So I've got two of the mounted filters, drawers, and one of them will be for the clear glass and one of them will be for my IDAS MBZ UHS filter. And then the other one I've got is the 50.4 unmounted filter holder. And this is for a UV IR filter, so I don't have to swap it back and forth between my other scopes and the RASA. So the supplier only had two of these uh, mounted filter drawers in stock. That's why I just got two of them, one of the unmounted filters, and then bought an unmounted filter. So with the mounted, sorry, with the unmounted filter, we got three Allen screws. With little rubber washers and that fits that as well. Now the filter itself it does have a front and a back and I can't remember which way around it is. There's a black ring around the surface which either goes towards or away from the camera. So I need to find that out. Okay, so if we have a look at Barrer's website, we can see blackened edges all around with filter lead side indicator in the form of a telescope sided black outer rim. So here's the mount. Telescope side, obviously the side with the silver ring. And have I got this wrong way around? Yes, I have. So, filter drawer, the black ring side of the filter needs to go down the way. So, looking at the glass, the black side goes down. There we have it, one UVIR cut filter ready to go in the drawer. Perfect. All right, so there we have it. There is the UFC filter system. And I've got the UVIR cut filter mounted into the drawer. And it's time to go and stick it on the scope. So let's head down to the observatory now. 
All right, so it's uh, next day, Dave, here. So yesterday when I did the um, installation of the UFC uh, system onto the RASA, unfortunately the GoPro, for whatever reason, has not got any of the files that had been recorded on it. Only the previous videos I'd done uh, were sitting on the memory stick, so I have no idea what happened to the, the content. So here I am in the next day, and I'll just give you a very quick look of the UFC system on the telescope. All right, so here we are. This was the original uh, filter uh, drawer that I had installed on the camera. So the camera obviously sat at uh, this side here with a couple of shims, uh, as I showed you in the drawing, with a filter drawer, 21 millimeters, and then the M48 uh, extension piece, 16 and a half millimeters long. And then onto the RASA adapter plate that comes with the OTA. And then that would have just all gone on to the front of the telescope. So now, here we are in the front of the OTA, and we can see we've got the 2600 camera, and then the UFC filter system with the uh, filter drawer right up against the camera, followed by the uh, 15 to 20 millimeter uh, Verilock, a 5 millimeter and 15 millimeter uh, extension piece. And then the silver plate, obviously the, the RASA plate uh, adapter there onto the front of the OTA. And the filter drawer just slips in and out there with the UVIR cut filter installed. So, yeah, that's what it looks like when it's in place. All right, and the other thing that I bought was obviously the filter drawers for the M48 or 2 inch. Uh, mounted filters so this is the drawer here and we can see I've got the IDAS NBZ UHS filter uh, screwed into it so yeah very low profile and that'll just slide into the filter drawer no problem okay so here we are back inside again so I've spent the last hour or so just uh, carrying out uh, numerous runs on the aberration inspector uh, on Nina and six runs I've done and each time I was doing a run I was watching what this uh, back focus error move sensor towards flattener was saying so if it was saying towards or away and adjusting the very lock uh, extension piece on the new uh, UFC optical train <coughs> and I've got it to the point now where it's just flipped back and forth between towards and away so I'm probably not far off where it needs to be and looking at the tilt uh, yet yeah, there is a slight bit of tilt there on the, uh, the plane of the sensor but I don't want to mess around with that at this time and the core contour map is looking pretty flat which isn't too bad so on the whole things aren't looking too bad at all so if we look at the last image that was taken, uh, the corner stars are looking pretty good and you know the corners typically get cropped out anyway but uh, when I look uh, they're looking fairly round, not too bad at all and down the other corner, yeah they're not too bad either so uh, certainly better than I've had in the, in the past. And the most noticeable thing, obviously, is the vignetting is significantly reduced compared to uh, the images that I showed earlier when I did the test plats. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to open up a session that I did last night uh, when I got back. Uh, I was just messing around and I did a run on the... Uh, Markarian's chain, uh, although I used the wrong, I didn't, well, I didn't use the wrong sensor, uh, sorry, filter, I just had a filter in there that uh, I was just poking around, uh, so uh, I did a recording on there anyway, but so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go back to the same place and I'll just leave it to run this evening and see what it does. So uh, I'm going to completely reset this sequence run, although it should have all reset. And if we go back to framing, and I will get the coordinates from 
sorry, if I go back to the sequencer, I should be able to send coordinates to the framing wizard. All right, and now if I slew and center, and see where the camera's pointing now that I've been messing around with it. So what I can also do is if I open up Home Assistant, I'll be able to see the monitoring cameras. I've got the IR currently turned off, but I can just make out enough. And I'm trying to see if the dome's moving. I wonder if I've got that turned off. Let's go back to equipment. Dome. Dome follows telescope is off. That doesn't help. Go back to home assistant. Yeah, the dome's moving now. <clears throat> so if we go back to Nina on my remote desktop session and go back to imaging and we'll see what it does. Okay, well, I can clearly see the chain running down there. Okay, we're back inside the tolerance. So, yep, there's the chain running through the scope. And if I do an autofocus on there, although it should have be autofocused already. Uh, but one thing I haven't done is turned on the camera cooling. So, let's turn that down. And then we'll leave that to cool. Okay, so what I've done is I've cooled the camera down now to minus five. And I wasn't happy with the camera rotation uh, for the Markarian's chain uh, since I've been messing around with the position of the scope. So I've changed the target to M101. I've slewed and centered this telescope to there. And on the imaging, I have done a 50% approximate region of interest in the middle with a 120 second exposure, a gain of 1 to 5. And uh, this is what we're seeing. So what I've done is on the sequencer, added that target to the sequence and I've set the region of interest to 50%. And it'll loop through till 4 o'clock in the morning. So basically all night, the target is up above 50%, uh, sorry, 50 degrees. So we're good, clear skies. And I think I'm gonna leave it to run like that. Let me start the sequence. Let's see what happens. All right, so the first image is just coming in. And there we go. So it's fitting the frame quite fine. So I'm happy with that layout. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Pix and Sight and set off a live stack. Okay, so here we are in Pix and Sight. This is on the second display. So if I go up to Script, Easy Processing, Easy Live Stack, start a new live stack. And we are running off the network. So let me go across to the desktop of the remote machine and we're doing M101 and let's open this up and the image is color we're not using any calibration frames at the moment so we'll just start watching all right, so here we are back. We're about an hour in now to the live stack. Uh, everything's still looking good. As you can see in the image there, that's the live stack of 32 minute uh, exposures. And guiding's holding good. It's uh, been steady around about the 0.58 arc second uh, mark. And uh, yeah, we're starting to see some detail in the uh, spiral of uh, M101. And uh, yeah, can't really complain so far. So we'll just leave it to run. The sequence has got another five hours to go. So we'll catch you later.
All right, so good morning everyone. It's the next day and the sequence ran all through the night last night. I, as we can see, it did say the, clo the dome shutter failed to close, although when I look at uh, Home Assistant, I can clearly see the shutter close, so I don't know what happened there, but never mind. And the live stack, it's got 163 files in it, uh, so it's looking not too bad at all. So I think the uh, the changes have worked quite well, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll drop the live stack and see how it comes out. All right, so we'll export the live stack and. Okay, so one exported live stack, and if we do a screen transfer function on it, we can see we get the typical heavy green over there. So I'm going to go to screen transfer and do an unlinked stretch just to see what's lurking. And there we have it. So not looking too bad at all. Uh, we can just do a dynamic crop on it. And that's looking not too bad. Okay, so with this image now, which has got the unlinked stretch and the crop done to it, I'm going to do a photometric, sorry, a spectro photometric color calibration to it. But first, I need to place all of it. So if we go to image solver, wherever the dialog is, there we go. And this is M101. All right, so now we've done an image analysis, uh, image solve on it. Spectrophotometric color calibration. Okay, so here's the image from the live stack. So remember this was with no calibration frames, no flats, no dark flats, no anything like that. It's straight out the live stack of the images and a photometric color calibration done to it after plate solving. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how the UFC system is working. And it certainly was a lot easier to dial in the back focus uh, using that setup than it was with the previous arrangement. And obviously there's significantly less uh, vignetting in the image with just the Basically, the far image, far corners of the images are uh, only affected, and obviously this is just a fifty percent uh, region of interest from the frames. So I dare say, if I did some proper uh, calibrations and pulled out all the hot pixels, etc., it will come out a lot better. So. Hopefully we're heading in the right direction and trying to optimize this image train. And uh, yeah, I'll keep podding away, but. Thumbs up for the UFC system. So we'll speak to you later. Thanks for watching. And any comments and everything, just drop them in the uh, section below. And we'll catch you in the next one.